would like to call to order the May 16th, 2022 Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners regular meeting. Welcome everyone. Uh, if you would please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First up is the approval or correction of the minutes. And commissioners, you all have a copy of that before you. So at this time, do I hear a motion to either amend or approve the minutes as presented? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes and we move to approval of the agenda. You also have a copy of that before you. So what would be your pleasure on the agenda? Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. And we move now to recognitions and presentations. Uh, first up is a, present, a proclamation recognizing J.M. Robinson's high school men's basketball team. Do we have members of that group with us here tonight? I, I don't think so, but I will go ahead and read the proclamation entitled Proclamation J.M. Robinson Men's Basketball State Championship. Whereas it has been brought to the attention of the Cabarrus County Commissioners that the J.M. Robinson Men's Basketball Team has exhibited astounding athletic abilities which has earned them a North Carolina 2A state championship title. And whereas the team was made up of 13 outstanding players, Simarion Hughes, Zakai Wheeler, Jalen Jackson, Brian Rowe, Jamari Brooks, Jock Kilsey, Pierce Carter, Camden Camp, London Roseman, Terrell Parker, Jermaine Gray, Andrew Jordan, Davine Hobbs, and two dedicated coaches, head coach LaVar Batts Sr. and assistant coach Andrew Jackson. And whereas the team won multiple tournaments throughout the season, along with their conference games, which led them to be the Yadkin Valley 1A, 2A conference champions, the 2A Western Regional Champions, and the 2A North Carolina State Champions. And whereas the team's overall year-end record was 28-3, their conference season was a perfect 12-0. And whereas the following team members received individual awards as participants in the North Carolina 2A State Championship game, Davine Hobbs, 2A Game Most Valuable Player, Jermaine Gray, 2A Most Outstanding Player, Jack Kilsey, 2A Sportsmanship Award. And now therefore be it proclaimed that the Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners do hereby extend congratulations and best wishes on behalf of the citizens of Cabarrus County to the J.M. Robinson 2022 North Carolina State Men's Basketball 2A Championship Team. Uh, commissioners, do I hear a motion that we approve this proclamation as presented? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> Just want to say that this is an outstanding achievement for these uh, young people, and we certainly are pleased to have the opportunity to recognize them along with so many other outstanding youth in Cabarrus County. Any other comments? If not, all in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, no. 
That motion passes unanimously. Uh, next up from Cooperative Extension, we have recognition of our 2021 Youth Commission and graduating seniors, and we're happy to have Tracy LeCompte with us for that recognition. Good evening, thanks for having us. We uh, at Cooperative Extension serve a lot of our different youth through our three main programs. And one of the privileges of my job as County Extension Director is to give leadership to our youth commission. And tonight we would like to recognize our outgoing seniors and invite Tisha Abdul, our president, to come and give uh, her senior speech. Good evening, I'm Tisha Abdul, the president of the Cabarrus County Youth Commission. And before I begin, I would like to formally thank you for yet another successful year for the Cabarrus County Youth Commissioners, and a special thank you to Commissioner Barbara Strang for being a great liaison between the Cabarrus County Commissioners and the Youth Commissioners. The Youth Commissioners have continued to strive to learn and grow and aid the community despite the challenges we have faced by the COVID-19 pandemic. These past two years, we have successfully supported the naming of the bridge in honor of Officer Shooping. We created a school supply drive aiding five Title I schools in our community by collecting over 77 pounds of school supplies in paper, pens, pencils, markers, and etc. We have also pioneered Talk It Out Tuesdays, a mental health initiative created to create a safe space for teenagers to talk about mental health issues and to learn more about mental health in our community. Additionally, we created Mental Health Mondays, another mental health initiative created to break the stigma around mental health um, around the high schools in our community as well. And additionally, we created GIS, GIS maps entailing the locations of local blessing boxes in our community to aid those in need. And again, thank you so much for your support in bettering the community. And this year we begin a new year of youth commissioners and we are now accepting applications for the 2023 uh, youth commissioners for the next year. And um, we have two positions open for each of the local high schools and four positions open in total for more non-traditional settings in the private schools and the charter schools. We also have um, the interview starting in September again this year as the new year begins. Interested students can now apply and their interviews will be held in the September time. Now I would like to ask my fellow graduating seniors to join me as they discuss their plans for the next year. This year, um, in the fall, I'll be attending the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill with a major in neuroscience on the pre-medical track. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. Hi, my name is Nisha Jack and Polly, and I'm from Hickey Ridge High School. And my plan is to go to Duke University in the fall and major in computer science and mathematics. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lainey Lancaster, and I go to Mount Pleasant High School. I plan to go to Chapel Hill in the fall and major in environmental science. Great, thank you. We certainly appreciate all the involvement that you folks have had and wish you well. It sounds like you have very ambitious plans going forward and we're certainly proud of you and, and appreciate what you've done for Cabarrus County. And encourage that, and you did a very good job of encouraging other people to get involved in the coming year. So thank you very much. Let's give them a round of applause. Okay, next from Planning and Development, Cabarrus Soil and Water Conservation District Contest recognitions, and we're happy to have Tammy Rimsberg with us for that item. Good evening. Every year, the Cabarrus Soil and Water Conservation District holds several student contests for grades K through 12th grade. And there are usually more than 2,000 students that participate um, in our county. Um, those winners can then, uh, the first place winners can go on to our area competition, which is uh, 11 other counties, and those first place winners go on to state levels. Unfortunately, we don't have our state winners 
given to us yet, so we're not sure if we have some winners there. But um, we definitely had uh, area as well as um, our county this year. We also had our um, 11 Envirothon teams compete in the area Envirothon competition um, from Cannon School and from Mount Pleasant Middle School. And one of the Mount Pleasant Middle School teams went on to compete in the state, so we were very proud of that as well. We would like to thank the commissioners for supporting uh, the Soil and Water District's budget so that we can honor these students with um, small awards for their excellent work that they do in these contests. Um, our budget also helps support those Envirothon teams if they make it to the state level. So we appreciate you uh, supporting that as well. Um, what I'm going to do is ask each of the students that are here tonight to come up, tell you their names, and tell you what school they um, are from, and if they would like to tell you what they won, and then just share one very small thing about why, what they learned or what they enjoyed about the contest. And our theme this year was Soil and Water, Yours for Life. So if you guys want to just kind of make a line in the aisle, and we'll it should come up. Will this lower a little more? Okay. okay. All right. Do you want to go first? Maybe Tell them your name. Must have one. Get real close and say it loud. Okay. Good. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's your name? Yeah, and Commissioner Kiger has a pen for each of you when you finish right. your comments. If yeah. you'll so check with him. Go over to him. Say it again. My name is. So you made a bookmark, right? Awesome. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Adrian. I just didn't want to. Okay. I'm Yoshita Kanaparthi. I'm from Patriot STEM Elementary. I won second place for the fifth grade poster competition. Okay. Thank you. Don't forget to tell them something about what you did for the contest. I do and animals and then beside it I drew trash and just like I was the poster was supposed to represent recycling and con conserving water and soil. Hello my name is Beryl Mice. I won the sixth grade uh, poster competition third place and um, I learned uh, how much we depend on natural resources to survive on the earth. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Congratulations. Hello, my name is Christopher Mosqueda, and I won second place CC Griffin Middle School, sixth grade. And um, I did a poster board. I really learned about how a little amount of trash can really affect a big amount of the world. Thank you. Hi, my name is Gage Loftus, and I came in second place for the Soil and Water Poster Contest for Jackson Park Elementary. And I really learned how animals can help the earth. Thank you. Hi, my name is Alushka Jaraliaga, and I won first place for the poster competition contest and I'm from CC Griffin Middle School and first I want to thank for the opportunity to be in the competition and I really learned a lot about the soil and how our earth can be affected if we don't save soil and water and I really had fun on the project because I learned lots of new things about it and thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> And my name is Bubika. I, I won first place of, of like soil and water. I learned, I learned that flowers can grow on soil and water. Thank you. Great job. Congratulations. Hi, my name is Molly McGinn, and I won first place uh, for the presentation at CC Griffin Middle School. I had a lot of fun making it, and it was a thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Addison Davis, and I, I go to CC Griffin, and I won first place for the essay contest. And I learned that um, if we all help out, we can make this world less 
trash full. <laughs> Thank you. My name is um, Elijah Williams, and I won first place for Jackson Park Elementary School. And I learned a lot about how soil can affect the earth and trash can really affect the earth if we just leave it around the place. Thank you. My name is Olivia Puckett. I won second place for the sixth grade essay writing contest. I've learned that there are so many ways to like help conserve our soil and um, water and like keep it clean and stuff, yeah. Thank you. Um, my name is Sun Lee and I am a student at Cannon School and I would like to thank you for your support and I was part of the team that qualified for states. Thank, thank you. you. Hello, I'm Miles Spellman. Uh, I won third place for the sixth grade essay contest. Uh, I'm from CC Griffin Middle School and I learned a whole lot about the methods in which you can actually save soil and water. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ashley Jaraliaga and I'm from Rocky River Elementary School and uh, I won first place in the book bookmark competition and what I learned is that we can, soil and water are really important for us. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. All right, well thank you for letting them introduce themselves. And um, forgive us, but we are going to go downstairs so they can get the awards that I'm giving them. <laughs> so we are going to leave. But um, thank you for supporting the contest every year. And as you can see, we're hopefully going to get some future uh, conservationists, maybe some future commissioners <laughs> that will that will protect what we have. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tammy, and thank you to all the students. Uh, I think Cabarrus County is in good hands. Uh, that's going to be the theme of our meeting tonight, outstanding young people uh, in Cabarrus County, and we've heard from two, two groups already. Uh, our next recognition is from Active Living in Parks, and this is recognizing the 40th anniversary of Frank Lisk Park, uh, and I would like to recognize Londa Strong to bring that proclamation. <coughs> Well, luckily you all don't get to hear me read or you don't have to read. Communications came up with a wonderful concept for this and we'll, Lauren's gonna play that now. the Cabarrus County Active Living and Parks Department is celebrating the 40th anniversary of Franklisk Park. And whereas on June 4th, 1982, Franklisk Park was dedicated and open to the people of Cabarrus County and the surrounding region and was the first Cabarrus County operated park. And whereas the Cabarrus Board of Commissioners and County Management have supported the continuous operation of the park and the many additions and improvements and whereas the park promotes health and wellness improving the physical and mental health of park patrons and whereas the park is a regional leader in providing healthy concessions and nutritional education and whereas the natural areas of the park ensure ecological preservation and provide a place for patrons to connect with nature and use their creative skills and whereas generations of residents have utilized the park for weddings showers birthday parties and other family events and whereas the Athletic fields host numerous practices, games, and tournaments, and the trails provide an opportunity for walkers and joggers. And whereas Frank Lisk Park has brought many hours of enjoyment and added to the quality of life of Cabarrus County for over 750,000 residents each year. Now, therefore, we proclaim the month of June 2022 
a celebration of the 40th anniversary of Franklisk Park. Activities throughout June will commemorate this special occasion. I hope that was better than any of us having to read it or you all having to read that. Did a great, the communications did a great job. Um, Perry, if you would, I would like to um, ask Steve Little, who's here tonight, to come up and say a few words. I've got a plaque for him. Let's see if I can dig that out. For those of y'all that know Steve, he said he wouldn't talk more than 15 minutes. We will definitely hold him to that. It's like homecoming. I guess last time I was here in 2007 when I retired. Um, it's kind of a humbling time when you think about it. 40 years, um, I was a young man back then, but uh, we, as a staff, I, I was assistant director then. William Cowan was the director there. And we're very fortunate that the state supported the, uh, the long-term lease. And I understand that Cabarrus County is, owns the property now, which is great. But uh, that, was a, that was an undertaking right there because I think the state had really not long, did a long-term lease with any group, especially for parks. So we had some very politically motivated individuals here in our county. Dwight Quinn, if you're familiar with Dwight Quinn up in Kannapolis here, he was our House of Representative. Jim Hunt, which he was very supportive of Frank Liss. Uh, Frank List was uh, very involved with the Democratic Party. So we had a lot of major players that really helped us acquire this property. And uh, as a staff, we were very, very excited. If you think back 40 years, if you were here in Cabarrus County, we had very few public parks. You probably think of didn't know them by your hands. You had a Myers Park, you had Caldwell Park, and you had Beverly Hills, all with the city of Concord. And I would say that Myers Park is probably less than 20 acres. But we had the school park concept, so we did have some, some active facilities, but we realized that wasn't the total answer for all our parks and recreation needs. So when we saw this piece of property, uh, it's very ideal. Natural beauty, you can see by the pictures here, you've got about a 10 acre lake there, you've got rolling hills, it's a beautiful setting, it's in the center part of your county, and we're very excited about it. Uh, but we also realize it's going to take a lot of money. So what we did, of course, the Board of Commissioners have been very supportive over the years, but we were able to get private funds from corporations. We were able to get grants from Land and Watch Conservation and the state part of system. So we were able to get partnerships throughout the, uh, the, the years. But we also realized that uh, we still needed some extra support, and we built joint partnerships. The soccer complex, for example, we had some partnerships there that helped us a lot with the City of Concord and the Cabarrus Soccer Association. So we found that this partnership really expanded the resources that we had that we could build this park. Uh, one thing that I would say that, uh, that I would say that I'm just really thankful, we've had a number of county managers here, all of them have supported Franklis Park. We've had boards and commissioners that all supported it, and I can't say enough for that because some people might say it's a leisure is a extra service. Well, guess what? The number one killer for individuals is stress. And you can see by the video there, all the running and activities, and obesity is a big issue. So I don't want to get up there and preaching, but that's, that's what the importance of it, of it is. And we realized at Franklin's Park, that was our flagship, and of course, Londa and her staff now uh, has built other parks throughout the entire system, and we appreciate it. Great. Thank you. I'm going to read this plaque. It says, uh, presented to Steve Little for your dedication and leadership in developing Franklin's Park, the 40th anniversary, celebrated June 4th, <coughs> 2022, presented by the Cabarrus County Active Living Parks Department on May 16th. 2022. Congratulations, Steve. I'm not through yet. 
<laughs> I, I, we had a plaque there for Bub Cowan, who is the one that worked with Frank Lisk and uh, Governor Hunt to actually acquire the land. I'm sure Steve was right there with him the whole way. Um, and Bub had a new grandbaby yesterday. It was two weeks early he had planned on being here, so he sent his regrets. But we have a plaque for him. We also have one for Randy Daniels, who was the park manager for, I don't even remember how many years, probably 28-ish years, and he was not able to attend either. But with that said, if you noticed on the, at the beginning of the video, the old, the sign, Franklin's Park, that's the original sign at Franklin's Park. The playground in the second slide was the original playground, the wooden playground that was built 40 years ago at the park. And I've got something for each of you all that was made out of the wood from the barn, that, some of it that was salvaged, if Perry will hand those to him. Oh, and, he, and we have the road race Saturday, June 4th, the 40th anniversary 5K, and he's got some um, awards that goes along with it. So we just had a little memento. We wanted to do, uh, Chris Carpenter is the one that actually made these for us. And we wanted to do the county, but he said it just looked like a triangle that he had screwed up on one side. <laughs> so he did the state and put the mark there. So we've got the uh, medals too. And thank you very much for your support. We appreciate it. Well, hey, Hopefully 40 more, but it won't be me. <laughs> We, we, we recognize some very, very deserving people, but the, there's two more very deserving people right here. Alana's been here in the park for uh, 40, over the, the entire time, the entire 40 years. Uh, and Perry has been uh, the park manager for how many of the last? He's been here 32, 12 out there. Been the manager of the park for the last 12, you said? Yes. Yeah, so, so they, they, they deserve the, as much appreciation, or almost as much appreciation as Mr. Little and the others. And so, right, so. Great. Well, <laughs> not, not a problem. And thank you for that presentation and for these mementos. And, and I would just add that um, with, with all of the memories that have been created at Franklin's Park, they are continuing and they're going to get better. Uh, we also are very excited about the acquisition of that property from the state of North Carolina uh, and also the construct. We, we, we're all sad about the loss of the barn by arson, but the plans are going to be something that's going to be even more useful and I think enjoyed by, by many Cabarrus County residents and, uh, and Probably you and Steve Little are probably the only two people in the room old enough to remember when Franklin's Park opened. But I will say for Steve and for Bub <clears throat> that probably the, the biggest contribution, uh, and they made a lot of positive contributions to Cabarrus County, but the, the best one was recruiting Londa Strong to, to, come, to come to work in Cabarrus County and for being here so long. So we appreciate uh, everything that all of you uh, have done for the people of Cabarrus County over the years and continue to do. Ah. Great, great, great. Okay, well commissioners, you did hear that proclamation presented in sort of a uh, not, not in our normal fashion, but do I, do I hear a motion that we adopt the proclamation as presented? So moved. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion or comments that anybody would like to make? If not, all in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. And thank you again for, for the mementos and for all of your service. And, and Steve, it certainly is good to see, see you here. And when we have the, uh, the 40th anniversary of the opening of Rob Wallace Park, we hope to see you all back here again. Thank you. We move now to item five from Department of Human Services, Foster Care Appreciation Month Proclamation. And we're happy to have Melissa Mayu for that. I would like to thank the board this evening um, for this wonderful opportunity to recognize our foster parents this evening. 
Cabarrus County Department of Human Services has 178 children in foster care, many of whom we struggle to maintain um, within our community for placements. Our agency has 37 amazing foster families that are dedicated to keeping children connected to our community, to their faith organizations, to their schools, and to their families. Um, we have um, 10 of our amazing foster parents here this evening to help each read a part of the proclamation. Um, many of our foster families have recently started their journey with us, and we have some that have been um, on, uh, given us 15 years of dedicated service to our community's children. And so we would like to have them come up this evening to each read a piece of the proclamation. Thank you. Whereas Cabarrus County joins the nation in recognizing the month of May as National Foster Family Appreciation Month, honoring foster parents who are true champions for the children in their care and who help to ensure their brightest possible futures. And. Whereas children are key to our community's future success, prosperity, and quality of life. And. Whereas children have a right to thrive, learn, grow in a safe and loving environment, and? Whereas foster parents, including kinship caregivers, provide the love, safety, and stability that children need in order to overcome past traumatic experiences, and? Whereas Cabarrus County foster parents and other caregivers are caring for and nurturing more than 145 children and youth currently in foster care today, and? Whereas Cabarrus County foster parents are helping birth families heal and thrive so children can be safely reunified and reach their full potential, and? Whereas Cabarrus County foster parents help children transition from foster care to permanent homes through adoption or guardianship when they can't be reunified with their parents. And whereas our community must come together to recognize the important role foster parents and kinship providers play in caring for abused and neglected children, supporting family reunification and building strong communities and Whereas there is always a need for more foster parents in order to ensure children and youth with complex needs have a safe, stable home in their community and siblings can live together. And? Whereas through partnerships with families, child wel welfare staff, public and private agencies, there is a collaborative effort to ensure that children are supported and cared for. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Board of Commissioners of Cabarrus County, do hereby proclaim May 2022 as Foster Care Appreciation Month in Cabarrus County and urge all citizens to engage in activities that strengthen families and communities to provide the optimal environment for children to learn, grow, and thrive. Great. Thank you very much. Commissioners, you've heard the proclamation. Do I hear a motion that we adopt it as presented? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All <coughs> opposed, no. That motion passes unanimously. And thank you so much for, for what you do for the children of Cabarrus County and for being here and delivering that proclamation in a very meaningful way. You know, I said earlier in the meeting, this meeting was all about children in Cabarrus County and our youth, and this is certainly a an extension of that, and, and so we appreciate um, what you do for, for our children and our community and, and for these families. Let's give them a round of applause.
Okay, now we move to item six, for also from the Department of Human Services, World Elder Abuse Awareness Day Proclamation, and we're glad to have Anthony Hodges with us for that presentation. Thank you, Commissioners, uh, uh, for allowing us to come to, for allowing me to come tonight and uh, present this proclamation on World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. Uh, that day is recognized each year on June 15th, but unofficially World, Aware World Elder Abuse Awareness Month runs from Mother's Day through Father's Day. And, and we kind of recognize through that, but uh, I'll, I'm here on behalf of uh, our adult and aging services staff, especially our adult protective services social workers and supervisors that they go out and investigate all these complaints. So the proclamation reads as follows. Whereas older adults deserve to be treated with respect and dignity to enable them to serve as leaders, mentors, volunteers, and vital participating members of our communities. And whereas in 2006, the International Network for the Prevention of Elder Abuse in support of the United Nations International Plan of Action proclaimed a day to recognize the significance of elder abuse as a public health and human rights issue. And whereas June 15, 2022, marks the 16th annual World Elder Abuse Awareness Day, its recognition will promote a better understanding of abuse and neglect of older adults. And whereas the National Center on Elder Abuse and the Cabarrus County Government recognizes the importance of taking action to raise awareness, prevent, and address elder abuse. And whereas, as our population lives longer, we are presented with an opportunity to think about our collective needs and future as a nation. And whereas ageism and social isolation are major, major causes of elder abuse in the United States. And whereas recognizing that it is up to all of us to ensure that proper social structures exist so people can retain community and societal <coughs> connections, reducing the likelihood of abuse. And whereas preventing abuse of older adults through maintaining and improving social supports like senior centers, human services, and transportation will allow everyone to continue to live as independently as possible and contribute to the life and the vibrancy of our communities. And whereas where there is justice, there can be no abuse. Therefore, the NCEA urges all people to restore justice by honoring older adults. And whereas join us in engaging and empowering movement and putting an end to abuse. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners hereby pro proclaim June 15, 2022, as World Elder Abuse Awareness Day in Cabarrus County, I encourage all of our communities to recognize and celebrate older adults and their ongoing contributions to the success and vitality of our country. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Commissioners, you heard the proclamation. Do I hear a motion that we adopt that as presented? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. Um, and so we have moved from one end of the spectrum, from elder to, to the youth. So that is a positive thing for our county. And next we have from EMS, Camaris County Emergency Services Week. And we're delighted to have Jimmy Lentz with us to make that presentation. Uh, good evening. Thank you for this opportunity to come annually for EMS Week, which is this week uh, currently. I will be um, honored to read the proclamation. Whereas emergency medical services is a vital public service, and whereas the members of emergency medical service teams are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or injury, and whereas emergency medical service teams consist of emergency physicians, emergency nurses, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, firefighters, educators, administrators, and others, and whereas the members of emergency medical services teams, whether career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and con continuing education to enhance their life-saving skills, and whereas Americans benefit daily from the knowledge and skills of these highly trained individuals, and whereas it is appropriate to recognize the value and the accomplishments of emergency medical service providers by designating Emergency Medical Services Week. And now, therefore, it be resolved that you, the Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners, in recognition of this event, do hereby proclaim the week of May 15th through the 21st, 2022, as Cabarrus County Emergency Medical Services Week. Thank you. Commissioners, you've heard the proclamation. Do I hear a motion that we adopt as presented? Amen. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. 
All opposed, no. That motion passes. Thank you very much. And I think you have the next item on our agenda, recognition of EMS personnel in paramedic competition. And we welcome Justin Brines to the microphone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the board. Um, Cabarrus County EMS is no stranger to strong performances when it comes to paramedic competitions. We have numerous uh, attempts over the years uh, at the regional competition, uh, several advances to the state competition. Uh, we've competed in the Carolina competition, which is separate from the North Carolina competition. It's a North and South Carolina uh, combination. We've won that three times. Um, and in 2011, we were the state champions of the North Carolina competition. After a two and a half year pause due to the pandemic, uh, the state uh, paramedic competition uh, started back up this year. Um, there were 27 teams from across the state who competed in the regional uh, competition. And I'm very proud to say that you have two teams here out of those 27 who were in one team in the top 10 and one team in the top five from across the state. I'll start with uh, Nicole Jernigan and James Hoover, who were at uh, won the or excuse me were second place at the regional competition at Catawba Valley Community College. Nicole has been with us since 2013. I have two Nicoles up here. I'm sorry, I have to <laughs> get the right one. And uh, James has been with us since 2017. Nicole is currently part time. James is full time, uh, assigned to one of our day shifts. Um, just so you know, the regional competition is spread out across five different sites uh, at community colleges throughout the state. It's the same scenario with just a slightly different twist, meaning different people are judging it, but they're judged on the same criteria. And they did place alternate uh, at that site, which is, again, out of 30 teams, uh, very, very well um, done. Our second team, uh, Nicole Shapiro and Caleb Frady, actually won their uh, regional site at Surrey Community College, and they advanced to the state finals. Uh, Nicole Shapiro has been with us since 2015 and Caleb Frady uh, since 2016. They are both lieutenants assigned to opposite uh, day shifts. This year's scenario had multiple patients. It was a rural farm uh, setting. Uh, they had a victim that was trapped in a hay baler for the first little bit. Uh, they had a victim experiencing a chemical poisoning and another unresponsive patient after something blew up uh, and exploded during the scenario. They make these things just reasonable enough to be something that could happen, but something you hope you never would have to see. The two of them had to manage that uh, in 12 minutes. Those, actually it was four patients. They had another one that was somewhat of a walking wounded patient. Having competed before, I can tell you that I had the best seat in the house that was sitting in the bleachers watching. Um, it's always great to sit there and uh, watch other people perform. And although we did not win the state, uh, Caleb and Nicole uh, did represent Cabarrus County very, very well. Um, I can tell you that their calm presence and their professional attitude uh, was paramount. They treated their patients uh, appropriately. Um, I did my best to find the mission of the paramedic competition. This was the 30th year that the state has done it. I've heard before uh, the mission when it started, and it was, I have to paraphrase, but it basically was to, to make better paramedics across the state by encouraging them to get in the books and to compete against each other. And I can tell you that every year that I've ever participated in it, as well as watched them this year, it did just that this year. Uh, Chief Mitchell from the Office of EMS, I think, summarized it well when he said all the teams in this year's competition were winners. Uh, they are North Carolina's best of the best in emergency medical response. And it's great to stand among these four individuals who are the best of the best uh, in North Carolina. As Jimmy just mentioned, uh, Chief Lentz mentioned, uh, this is EMS week, and the theme of the, of the week is rising to the challenge. I can tell you these four individuals volunteered uh, to do this competition. They did rise to the challenge. Um, I never stand before you when I don't point back to our EMS professionals that work alongside us every single day. I have 161 others uh, at the county who always rise to the challenge, and uh, it's because of folks like these who lead from the front, and uh, I just want to uh, have you join me in congratulating the four of them and their performance uh, this year. Thank you for those comments, Justin, and, and thank you f and congratulations on your performance. The, every citizen of Cabarrus County will, is a potential beneficiary <laughs> of, of the experiences that you've had uh, and, and, and the things that you learned while recognizing uh, Cabarrus County on a statewide level. So we certainly appreciate that. The next item is from Veteran Services, Memorial Day 2022 proclamation. And we're happy to have Tony Miller to make that presentation. Good evening to everyone. 
On behalf of all the veterans and their families of Cabarrus County, I present you with the Memorial Day Proclamation. Whereas our ancestors shaped the structure of our political system, laid the groundwork for higher discoveries in science and medical research, started long-lasting traditions that enrich our heritage, and fought in war so that future generations would have freedom. And whereas it is important to cherish the memories of our, our friends and family members who have died and to remember the contributions toward making our lives better. And whereas the veterans who fought and died for our country helped preserve the freedom and rights guaranteed to all people under the U.S. Constitution. And whereas on Memorial Day, Americans remember the enormous debt of gratitude we owe to our veterans who have lost their lives in the defense of freedom and pursuit of peace, and we reflect on the past and renew our patriotism so that we may continue to live in freedom and seek peace so that our veterans will not have died in vain. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners do hereby recognize May 30th, 2022 as Memorial Day 2022 in Cabarrus, County, in Cabarrus County and urges all residents in the county to take time on this special day of remembrance to honor those who have sacrificed and died to improve our quality of life and to strengthen our nation adopted this 16th day of May, 2022. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, sir. Commissioners, you've heard the proclamation. Do I hear <coughs> a motion to approve? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to adopt the proclamation as read. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, please say no. That motion passes. Okay, we move now to informal public comments. Um, a few, few things that, uh, a few mentions before we begin that process. At our work session two weeks ago, we had extensive discussion about our public comment session and the board um, voted on and passed uh, policies and procedures related to our public comment session. Our clerk has copies of that full um, um, ordinance or proclamation that, that are available to anybody that would like to have a copy of those and, and understand the rules. I'm going to give a brief synopsis of that for the benefit of, of all present tonight as well as those who may have signed up and I think we have six uh, cards for public speaking tonight. And so I'll read the following. The Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners meetings are essential for the lawful and transparent transaction of important public business. State law and board policies allow members of the public to not only attend these meetings, but to also participate in parts also. The board has adopted a public participation policy which provides reasonable rules on how the public have their voice heard by their leaders. The clerk has copies of the policy that you can review, which I just mentioned. Under the policy, the board welcomes all viewpoints. However, the board asks that all speakers follow some basic common sense guidelines to make sure that all feel welcome and that the board can perform its important work. Here are a few key points. Number one, speakers must be respectful and observe proper decorum in their statements by refraining from vulgarity, obscenities, profanities, speaking in a tone or manner that threatens disruption or other like breaches of respect. Two, speakers may not personally attack board members, county employees, or members of the public. Speakers are free to discuss substantive concerns of public interest regarding a public official's conduct or qualifications, but irrelevant insults and attacks are not allowed. Speakers may not disclose personally identifiable information about minors, such as names, birthdays, 
addresses, or pictures without permission from a minor's parent or legal guardian. Four, speakers must register with the clerk by filling out a yellow card before speaking. Speakers usually have up to three minutes. Uh, in certain circumstances, that time could be shortened if we have an abundance of people present. As, a providing, as the presiding officer of the board, I am responsible for enforcing this policy. I will work with speakers to make sure that they are treated fairly in accordance with the law. We thank all of you for being here tonight and look forward to hearing from you. And so if you would, when you approach the podium, please <coughs> state your name. You'll notice there is a timer that will tell you how much time is remaining of your three uh, allocated minutes. And, our, and the cards are numbered in the order in which they are turned in. So number one is Jerry Anderson. Hello, uh, Mr. Morris, you need to get with me. We'll get a name for that policy because I know it was set up by me. It came in effect because of me. And you can just say it was because of a father trying to find his daughter, what he, you can make a little story with it. And, uh, but anyway, I was in the army. I went to race relations and uh, this, 14, this was phase three for 14 hours phase three, that's 52 hours. And uh, I think we could use that in social services. And the reason I say that is when I went there to ask for help, the lady helped me and then she was leaving and she brought two social workers on that were mean and awful. And she said, as long as my granddaughter is at this address, Everything's okay. And she, she closed her case. And in the meantime, these social workers had told me we didn't know how to handle this black child. And my daughter was standing there and she had animosity with them. She says, y'all don't even have children. And I got a beautiful black child. Well, they found a, a way to open up a second case. They shouldn't have never cause we done been investigated. And uh, they opened up a se second case. And I keep asking, why did they come to my house and take that child? Well, little leaky leaky from these sealed files and stuff, I found out they took, took over on uh, April, April 11th. They took custody of my child. She was taken from my house on the 9th. Where was she? And, and uh, where, did they even say they took her from my house? Why I can't get an answer? But on the film that we got, I did ask them at that day, and you can hear it. I said, why are y'all taking my child? And she said, you, you didn't get a phone call? So I guess they took my child because I didn't answer the phone, which we was out of town in Greensboro having fun as a family. And they took that child with, with no interest to that child's well-being and took her, and we never seen her again that night after a great day. And um, one other thing I'd like to say, we got a DSS prosecutor up here uh, that called my house and I don't like him. And I never contacted him and in six years, he contacted me and my son and told us people were mad. And uh, things have been getting kind of crazy here. I see him more often, my tires have been, nailed in them, stabbed. My house has been open. When I come home, Jay White needs to answer and tell me who's mad at me and how he's still here, I have no way of knowing. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Jeter Anderson. How y'all doing? Jeter Anderson. I like to speak tonight about our Cabarrus DSS. I really think the state should take over our DSS due to un untrained, unprofessional individuals there taking children. 
we're quick to adopt proclamations and quick to adopt things. And my niece was quickly adopted out of all these children that are looking for homes. My niece was quickly adopted. And um, she never should have been. And uh, to speak up here is very hard, especially when you're intimidated and scared by a public official. To be threatened like that and all the crazy stuff going on, it, it is detrimental to speak. Um, he, he never should have called us. I've called everybody on this planet except Mr. White. And it's, it's pretty scary. And uh, I just want to ask county attorneys if they seen both of them seen the video of the taking of the little girl. And uh, like I say, I just hope the state takes over our Cabarrus DSS for sure. Yeah. Also, uh, th them files that are sealed, how sealed are they? You know, y'all couldn't even speak about it. And here we are, the child's taking April 11th. And she's doing fine. She's doing fine, Goldberg. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> But uh, uh, they said she's doing fine, that uh, the guardian light them said. And she likes where she w is. Only thing is, I don't believe it. You know, that child don't know what adoption is. I think y'all need to look for into this and handle the public officials threat. And just look out for the people. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Debbie Balst. Commissioners and staff, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Um, I am a glass half full versus a glass half empty kind of person. So I come to you tonight trying to offer some solutions because there are people in this community concerned about the Cabarrus County Fair and agriculture as it relates to the Cabarrus County Fair. So what I'm asking you to do is there's time, but time is getting short, but please call last five years of vendors. Let, let's get the community together and have some meetings and get their input and involvement to make sure that the Cabarrus County Fair remains relevant. The people in the community don't feel like what they want or need is being listened to. So have your independent food vendors, the last five years worth, come in and have a small group discussion. What do you like about the fair? What don't you like about the fair? What would you change about the fair? It's just a couple questions. Listen to what they say. And if they think everything's great, that's great. You call in your booth exhibitors, the people that spend money to have booth exhibits there at the fair. Have them come in. Ask them the same questions. Listen to what they tell you. Have your livestock exhibitors from the last five years come in. What do you like? What don't you like? What would you change? What can we do differently to remain relevant? Because county fairs are going away. And that's a real serious problem because did you know that chocolate milk comes from blackface sheep? I didn't, because it doesn't. But I have children tell me that all the time. And it's a serious problem because they don't know where their food comes from. And everybody needs to know where their food comes from because it's important every day. It's important. We took our big draft mules to a fair and they, someone said, look at those wonderful buffalo. Oh my gosh, buffalo. And we smile and think to ourselves, my goodness, but it's important that every, the fair has the best opportunity to remain relevant in this county anywhere. And it can grow because fairs are going away. You can draw from so many other counties. And it's just so important. I, the kids come because they love to milk the cow. 
You know, they don't get to do that anywhere else. And so I just ask, please, if you have the opportunity, please invite these people and have them come separately because there's going to be things identified by different groups um, because they have different needs. But have have a couple meetings, listen to them, listen to what they say they want. It takes just a little bit of time, but it's so important to remain relevant in this community and we need you and you need them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Marvin Balst. My name is Marvin Bost from Mount Pleasant, North Carolina. Came to talk about the fair. We uh, just really are concerned about things that we found out since their last meeting. Um, one thing we found out that uh, I was on the Cabarrus County Fair Board when the county took the fair board from the fair board. And it was a, I thought it was a uh, pretty well agreement that SMG would be a support staff to the county fair. Finding out this week that SMG hadn't been involved since 2018. And, you know, what is the reason there? All right, also finding out this week that the corporate extension is not involved at all in the county fair. Their name is nowhere, they're nothing. All right, also, a award-winning program for sixth graders. And you, you we talked about it in the, uh, it was the Soil and Water Project. And they brought the children in and we had stations and they learned. And then they brought their families back at night to show them what they had saw. So that's just a win-win situation. Well, guess what? It's not going to happen this year at all. Why? You know, there's so many questions that need to be answered. And I, I just don't understand. There's an educational thing. And it's not there. Hadn't been there since COVID, of course. But still, the opportunity, it should be back now. So I asked you. I, we've got people here that showed livestock, uh, different things that uh, have been involved in the fair and you know I've got a couple more that's going to speak but I, I just asked you please help us go back to where the fair was for agriculture thank you all very much thank you our next speaker is Susan Furr Uh, my name is Susan Furr. I'm from Stanley County, North Carolina. I've been with the 4-H and the FFA for years and years, helping children show livestock. Well, a few years back, we went to Cabarrus County to show our livestock, our lambs, and when we got there, the stalls were this deep. We showed after the cows did. They did not clean it. They just piled the stuff back on top, some more shavings and the straw and stuff, and it was like this deep. I have pictures of it. Um, I asked them for a front end loader, if they didn't have anybody that could do it, that I would clean it up before we put our lambs in it because lambs are susceptible to a fungus. Well, we cleaned up as much as we could of it by a wheelbarrow and pitchforks, and the kids had to show right after that. We were so disappointed in you know, the kids were tired after they did it. Kids will sit there and eat, and, um, you know, kids can get things from all this, too. Well, a bunch of our lambs came down. I think that year we had, like, 30 lambs there showing. A bunch of our lambs came down with the fungus, and it knocked us out. We show usually 10 or 15 different fairs, you know, through the first part of the school year and all, up until we do the state fair. Some of our lambs, only got to show at the Cabarrus County Fair, and that was the first one we did. And they were cleared up by the state fair, if that tells you anything, how bad it is for them. Because they, when you take your lamb into a fair, they absolutely will not let you show it if it has anything wrong with it, a fungus or anything like that, because it's transferable to other animals. 
And, you know, I brought my concerns to them at the time about how dirty it was there. You know, they just piled it, oh, don't worry about it, it's okay. You know, we know what we're doing here. And I asked them about the front end loader, we don't have one of those, or a skid steer, because I can drive either one. And that we don't have one. And when I drove my trailer to the back to park my cattle trailer, lo and behold, what's sitting there? Two front end loaders and a skid steer. So they just out and outright lied to me about it. They had, we were the second week, I think, showing. And so the other animals had shown before us. And behind the curtain, they had stacks and stacks of shavings. I mean, there's no possible way they over ordered shavings like that. They just didn't put them out. I don't know what they were saving them for, but it certainly wasn't for the kids. And when I say our kids missed the, some of the other fairs, it's not just missing the fair that we didn't get to go to. These kids rely on premiums from showing these animals in order to feed them, in order to be able to drive back and forth to other fairs. You know, that takes money and fuel and to haul them back and forth and the feeding time, prepping time for them and shearing them and all. And these kids were unable to show these lambs until they got to state fair. And I just think that, you know, any fair we've ever been to has been clean. This one was not. And that's the last time we showed Cabarrus County. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Reverend Roland Jordan. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, commissioners, attorney. I bring you greetings in the name of Jesus, even though this hate season. But I speak the truth for you. Um, I want to do it in decent order. I had a couple of strokes and um, I had to get myself back together. So, Mr. Steve, I thank you for the letter you sent me. Say it's, it's urged me to continue to come to the meeting, so I thank you for that. But I want to thank uh, Mr. Mike Downing. When I call, have a mercy, he get right on it. And I thank him for that. And, and I think what you do for our senior citizens is very important. But uh, I don't know what the rule is that say seven years when the senior citizens go to the nursing home. Social service takes their home. I think that need to be reevaluated. The family members or friends, whoever they have for the will, they should be able to take charge of that. And uh, nothing wrong with uh, five years or uh, the people would have the deed, but make sure you don't take the people house. Give the family members or friend time to pay it. So I had a concern about that. Um, living similar. Living Center for our senior citizen, Sister Linda do a great job, Linda Scrong and her staff. You know, we recommend them for doing that, taking care of our senior citizen. And our youth, we still need a uh, race relation, you know. And I got a problem when our adults people are cussing their kids out. So they say there's no law, but we need to put some rules down and guidelines on that as citizen because that's disrespectful for our kids. Oh, I know if you believe in the word, it says do not revolt our kids. So that's revolting our kids, you know. We have enough trouble trying to keep them out of jail, you know. And we wanna make sure our inmates in, in the jail get decent food. You know, they're human beings, you know, because they pay out a lot of money, you know, the food they get. So make sure they get good nutrient food, you know. And uh, that's a concern that I have for the inmates, and they've been speaking on that. So I ask them when they get out to say something about it, but some of them don't. But we want to make sure they treat it fair and everything right. But in the near future, you know, we're going to have leaders. God going to raise leaders up to do the job, you know. But I ask y'all to, to keep all our families and, and friends in, in prayer. God bless you. Thank you. That concludes all of the cards that I have for public speakers tonight. Uh, so at this time, we will move to our consent agenda. Our consent agenda consists of items that were discussed at our work session two weeks ago uh, extensively. Um, I think we have 19 of those tonight. And so commissioners, do I hear a motion that we approve the consent agenda as presented? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. And we move now to new business. Uh, 
first item from is regarding an economic development investment at West Winds Center LLC and NASCAR Media Group. And we have S Samantha Moose with us to talk about that item. Samantha Moose, blast from the past. Well, you know, I was sitting here <laughs> trying to say, is it moose or grass? And that, hey, that's I the second it, time I've too. done that. I do it yes. too. Um, thank you for this opportunity to present this project um, tonight. So West Wind Center LLC and NASCAR Media Group LLC plan to relocate their NASCAR productions operation from Uptown Charlotte to a new technology center. The new center would be adjacent to the existing NASCAR R&D Center that's located on West Winds Boulevard off of Derrida Road. The project location is 7550 West Winds Boulevard North Northwest in Concord. NASCAR Productions is the television and video production division of NASCAR. This 58,000 square foot facility with the ability to expand would be a mix of studios, production facilities, and office space. They will also be relocating 125 jobs to this Concord location from Charlotte. Average wage is 77,000, so well above our current county average wage. Um, the projected investment is estimated to be 28.5 million in real and personal property. Um, the Cabarrus County grant analysis is based on that estimated 28.5 million projected investment in real and personal property. We are asking for your consideration of a three year 85% economic development grant. The estimated grant for that three-year term is $525,687. The net revenue to the county during that grant term is over 90,000. Happy to answer any questions you have. Okay. Questions for Samantha, commissioners. Okay, okay. thank, thank you. you. Uh, we have advertised a public <coughs> hearing for this item. So at this time, I would like to open the public hearing and invite anyone to the podium that would like to speak on this matter. Okay, seeing no one, we will close the public hearing um, and, and move to the item. Uh, any further questions that any commissioners might have, or do you have a motion? Huh. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a, make a motion to approve an economic development agreement, three years, 85%, between West Wind Center LLC and NASCAR Media Group LLC and Cabarrus County, and to authorize the county manager to execute the agreement on behalf of the board, subject to review or revision by the county attorney. <coughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there discussion? I will say that I have visited this uh, potential facility and it is extremely impressive. Uh, I think you've, you've heard the information that Samantha gave us about the, the pay rate for the jobs there. Uh, and the number of jobs that are involved. So I think this is a tremendous addition to Cabarrus County. We, we do consider Cabarrus County the home of NASCAR, and this helps to solidify that. So we, we are delighted to have, uh, to have them move this facility to Cabarrus County. Any other comments? If not, we do have a motion on the floor. All in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, no. no. Okay, that motion passes four to one. Uh, and the next item on our agenda is um, a resolution amending the Board of Commissioners 2022 meeting schedule. And I think that just simply changes the time of our June 6th work session which will be held in the commissioner's meeting room. Uh, and then we will have a public hearing on the budget that night. Uh, this is a little bit different than the way that we've done it in years past. Uh, we have not had an extreme amount of public participation or input. Uh, and so 
we're trying a different approach to see, see if we can give another opportunity for the public to be involved in the uh, budget process. So I would entertain a motion to adopt the resolution making that change. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. And we move to item four from finance. Cabarrus County reimbursement resolutions for Roberta Road Middle School. And we're happy to have... Dick oh, yep, I skipped over one. Uh, okay, we'll go to item number three. Uh, Duke Energy easement at Rob Wallace Park, and we're David Goldberg will talk with us about that one. Good evening, commissioners. Um, Duke Energy has asked that the county grant them an easement to so they can in, install um, underground power cabling in support of Rob Wallace Park's development in Phase 2B and Phase 3. Um, this is just a legal execution. It gives them the right to be able to install the infrastructure necessary for it. Um, it, this is a standard easement, and uh, I'm happy if there's any questions to be asked. Okay, questions for David. Okay, I would then entertain a motion to authorize the county manager to grant the attached easement between Cabarrus County and Duke Energy, subject to review or revision by the county attorney. I move. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. And now we will go to Cabarrus County Reimbursement Resolutions, and we're happy to have Rodney Harris to tell us about that. Good evening. Uh, so this is a last-minute addition, um, but you are familiar with these reimbursement resolutions. Um, this was added because Roberta Road Middle School was part of the 2022 draw, 2020 draw program which is now winding down. And so we are going to have about one month uh, of a lapse between the 2020 draw and the new 2022 draw. And so we need to be able to reimburse ourselves for those expenses over that one month period. And so that's what this item is and we are asking for approval tonight. Questions for Rodney. Thank you, sir. I uh, would entertain a motion to adopt the reimbursement <coughs> resolution for Roberta Road Middle School. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. And we move now to item five. And that will be the presentation of the fiscal year 23 recommended budget. And I will turn the floor over to County Manager Mike Downs. Okay, I've got water this time and I'm gonna try to not cough the whole time. Well, I think that your budget message must be very intriguing because you see that our number of spectators yeah, has de gone. decreased significantly. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. That's okay. The lame attempt at humor. All right, so yeah, so I, I will present the budget message uh, uh, and then for the, for the audience uh, on TV as well. Uh, there'll be, uh, as uh, Chairman Morris said, there'll be a public hearing coming up uh, where the public can provide input as well. Uh, we will also, if you need to, if you want to help provide input otherwise, uh, you know, feel free to give us a call as well. So, so May 16th, 2022. It is my honor and privilege to submit the fiscal year 2022-2023, or, or as we refer to it as FY23, recommended budget. Staff prepared this budget in accordance with the laws of North Carolina, guided by the Board of County Commissioners' strategic priorities. Fiscal year 22, a look back. In planning for FY22, commissioners adopted a budget aligned with the county's strategic priorities of having a thriving economy, a healthy and safety community, available cultural and recreational opportunities, sustainable growth and development, and a transparent and accountable government. The FY22 budget focused on several important elements of a successful community. It funded high quality educators in schools, which are crucial to the thriving economy. The county paid supplements 
for certified staff employed by Cabarrus County Schools and Kannapolis City Schools, <coughs> increased for the ninth consecutive year. For the 2022 year, school year, Cabarrus County had the 16th rank in the state and uh, Kannapolis City Schools had the 53rd highest average of teacher supplements out of 150, 115 local education agencies in the state. Just 10 years ago, Cabarrus County Schools ranked 37th and Kannapolis City Schools ranked 70th in the, 70, 70th in the state. This progress would not have happened without your commitment and this important priority. School facilities also received substantial funding in the FY22 budget, including just under $55 million to replace R. Brown McAllister <coughs> Elementary School, complete the construction of the Roberta Road Middle School, design a new Northwest High School, and replace five roofs for schools. The budget set aside just over $12 million for school For, for school projects like flooring and playground replacements across both districts and the Rowan Cabarrus Community College. Through all our efforts, we continue to work toward a county where our children learn, our citizens participate, our dreams matter, and the families and neighbors thrive and our community prospers. Fiscal 23, where we're going. The FY23 budget funds critical investments while maintaining a property tax rate of 74 cent per $100 of assessed value for a third consecutive year. That brings the general fund operating budget to just under 318 million. We understand the importance of a competitive and stable tax rate for residents. The county's five-year financial plan assumes the tax rate will be maintained in fiscal year 24 as well with a revisit scheduled for fiscal year 2025 budget process. The 2025 budget process will be impacted by new property values that will become effective January 1st, 2024, an opportune time to consider a tax rate adjustment if the board desires. Our services contribute to the well-being and quality of life for residents. This requires strategic investments as the county grows. However, staff is also mindful that any investments must be balanced with the impact on taxpayers. We believe this budget strikes that balance. Although the population of Cabarrus grew by 27% from 2010 to 2020, the county continues to uphold its reputation as a wonderful place to live, work, and visit by providing an enhanced quality of life. The University of Wisconsin's Popular Health Institute's County Health Rankings puts Cabarrus at 13 out of 100 counties in North Carolina. Across key health measures such as crime rate, unemployment, and health outcomes. These results are due in large part to our dedicated public safety agencies and the Cabarrus Health Alliance. This budget includes additional funding for these core areas. Finally, this budget enhances county recreational opportunities with the upcoming construction of a new library, senior center, and park facility in the Northeast part of the county, added or updated amenities at Franklis Park, and an additional phase to Rob Wallace Park in Midland. This message details three major areas of the budget, personnel, education, and capital or building projects. Personnel, the most important commodity that we have. To ensure we provide competitive compensation compared to other jurisdictions, the FY23 budget increases public safety salaries between 5 and 15% for 287 of their positions, including deputy sheriff, senior deputy sheriff, telecommunicators, fire captains, and more. These adjustments are the result of a recently completed market study that compared our public safety pay rates to comparable cities and counties throughout North Carolina. In addition, the budget also includes funds for a 1% cost of living adjustment for all employees and a, and a merit pay increase of up to 4% based on their individual performance throughout the year. Competitive pay enables us to attract and retain high quality employees to allow us to serve the community, community better. Under the leadership of Sheriff Fanshawe, the Sheriff's Office continues to provide essential services ranging from traffic enforcement to criminal investigations to jail operations. The FY23 budget 
adds 11 positions to the sheriff's office, including a captain, five deputy sheriffs, and six detention officers to provide additional needed services. Expenses associated with the proposed captain and two deputy sheriff positions will be paid by the town of Harrisburg through their contract for law enforcement services. Additional funding of $921,006 for the Cabarrus Health Alliance will allow the hiring of two additional on-site wastewater staff members to address substantial wait times for septic and well permits, two food and lodging staff members to complete required inspections, and a school nurse for the Roberta Road Middle School. This funding also covers inflationary costs for their personnel as well. From the 20, from 2020 to 2021 calendar years, the call volume for emergency medical services, or EMS, as we noted earlier, increased by 15% to more than 35,000 calls for service. During that same time, EMS maintained a response time of under eight minutes. Night shift has become more challenging during the pandemic, leading to vacancy rates of over 10% for both full and part-time personnel. To combat this problem, the budget adds two paramedics to maintain appropriate response times and prevents ambulance shutdown. We are currently exploring shift differential pay to attract current and future employees to consider the night shift. Those positions will help, but we must also think creatively about how to overcome the challenges of attracting talent. The budget proposes three paramedic trainee positions that will attend the new paramedic academy at Rowan Cabarrus Community College. Upon completion of the program, these trainees would move into a full-time paramedic position with a two-year employment commitment to the county, and hopefully stay longer. This approach provides another pathway to addressing staffing challenges within EMS. For our Human Services Adult Services Division, the budget adds a social worker three to address the rising number of guardianship and adult protective services cases. Guardianship is a legal relationship in which a person or an agency is appointed by the courts to make decisions and act, on be, and act on behalf of a person who does not have the adequate capacity to make those decisions. The division is currently responsible for 63 individuals with expectations of increasing next year due to the policy changes at the state level. Similar policy changes at the state and federal levels have made an additional social worker two in the special assistance in-home program uh, in-home services program necessary. This program provides at-home support services for Medicaid eligible individuals at risk of entering an adult care home. Human Services also has a need for additional staff in the Child Welfare Division. The budget adds two social worker investigative assessment positions to work a non-traditional schedule from 3 p.m. to midnight. During the busiest times of the week, a social worker Supervisor three, to oversee, to oversee their intake staff, a social worker, supervisor three, to oversee family assessments, and a social worker three, to receive intake calls. The division has experienced significant turnover in the past year and continues to manage high caseloads. These, these positions will provide much needed stability. Veteran Services continues to assist veterans and their families with filing claims for benefits. Staff assists with filing of over a thousand claims each year, resulting in more than $10 million in benefits for, the, for our local veterans. The budget adds a veteran services officer to help veterans get benefits that they have earned. While this is not a mandated service for the county, the need is great and continues to grow each year. The county's rapid growth continues to increase the workload for, the, for our construction standards division. The budget adds two code enforcement officers and a permit associate to complete residential and commercial property inspections and issue building permits for residents and developers. These positions will be funded using additional inspection and permit fees collected by the county throughout the year. As in the past, these positions will remain vacant until the demand increases beyond staff, staff abilities. It is an exciting time in Cabarrus County for our public library system. The library or the system will add its six branch location in late 2024 with the opening of the new Afton Ridge Library and Senior Center. Additionally, the system will open expanded facilities in Mount Pleasant and Harrisburg within the next five years. 
The budget adds a deputy director to oversee the growing systems and external programs, marketing, and research efforts and outreach. The remaining recommended positions address current deficiencies. They include an assessment associate to provide support for personal property appraisal staff to increase customer service and responsiveness. A cybersecurity analyst to excuse me, a cybersecurity analyst to monitor the state the county's internal and third-party security prevention and detention solutions, which ensures the integrity and the protection of the county's network and systems. A grounds, mechanic, a grounds maintenance mechanic to increase efficiency by providing in-house maintenance and repairs on equipment and small engines. A heavy equipment operator to meet and grow, to meet growing demands with a consistent level of customer service at the construction and demolition landfill. A network engineer to manage and configure to manage, configure, install, and analyze network security, infrastructure, voice, wireless, and building security systems. A, a resource conservation easement specialist to review, record, and monitor easements for programs that preserve county land. A strategy manager to oversee strategic planning and performance efforts for an accountable government. In total, the budget funds an additional 39 positions across county departments. While this request is well short of what was asked for by our department leadership, <coughs> these individual or these additional positions are crucial to strengthening essential county services in the year ahead. Another new employment pathway included in this budget is a management fellow program and increased intern, internship opportunities. The three Management fellows will be recent graduates or students in master level courses interested in serving full time in a high priority area of the county. Interns will be <coughs> recent graduates or current students at a community college or university who are willing to serve part time for th three to six months. Both programs align with the board's goals to create opportunities for people to see value in the work of county government. They also support our commitment to succession planning and continuous improvement. Education, key to a thriving community. We cannot overstate the importance of making investments in our, in in our education partners. Cabarrus County Schools, Kannapolis City Schools, and Rowan Cabarrus Community College. As always, part of the investment helps attract and retain educators. The FY22 budget included funding of a 10.5% local supplement, however, the Cabarrus County Board of Education went beyond that, choosing to use one-time fund, federal funding to increase the local supplement to 12%. For the 2022, 2023, and 2024 school years. After the, 12, after the 2024 school year, there will be insufficient funding for the supplement to remain at 12% without, without budgeting additional local funding. The budget, this budget includes funding equivalent to 1% of the county paid local supplement for certified staff to begin reserving the funds that will be needed to cover the shortfall in two years. The remaining 0.5% needed to fully cover the shortfall will be, will be recommended in the FY24 budget. In addition to the supplement, the Cabarrus County School budget includes additional funding to cover the rising cost of locally paid staff and technology expenses for the new Roberta Road Middle School and the Cabarrus Health Sciences Institute and an additional 561,000 to improve facilities and grant to improve facilities and ground maintenance. The Cabarrus County School budget totals 73.6 million, an increase of 3.6%. The county paid local supplements for Kannapolis City School, excuse me, the county's paid local supplement for Kannapolis City School lags Cabarrus County Schools due to the requirement to allocate an equal share to each school based on enrollment. In essence, an additional dollar provided to KCS would require an additional $9 for Cabarrus County Schools, making a significant supplement increase cost prohibitive. Given that challenge, the budget includes funding of a half a percent increase in the county paid local supplement for certified staff employed by KCS. The KCS budget totals $8.9 million, an increase of 3.1%. The county is required to provide equal per pupil funding for residents choosing to attend a charter school. Charter school enrollment continues to rise, 
with an estimate of nearly 3,000 students. That's a 21% increase over the past three years. This results in total per pupil funding of $6.3 million, which is an increase of 14.4% for charter schools. Last year, the county and Cabarrus County Schools agreed that operating expense funding for continuation and local supplements would instead go to deferred maintenance projects until FY25. The district is using one-time federal funding to cover the gap until that time. Total funding reserved in the budget is $4.9 million, with $4, with $4 million for Cabarrus County Schools and $487,887. $487,887 for Kannapolis City Schools and $345,693 for charter schools. With this reserved amount, the operating budget totals $93.6 million. Rowan Cabarrus serves nearly 19,000 students each year through 55 degrees, 36 diplomas, and 101 program, certificate programs. The college plays a vital role in the workforce in economic development within the county and region. Additional funding for utilities, personnel, and a new building automation technician co-funded by Rowan County are, in the, are included in the budget. This results in total funding of 3.95 million, which is an increase of 5.3% over the current year. Capital projects, funding for the preservation and growth. The FY23 budget includes $38.2 million from the general fund to the Community Investment Fund, or CIF, for current and future debt payments. The budget also includes $22.1 million for the county's pay-as-you-go, or pay-go program. Pay-go is the use of cash rather than debt to pay for the needed capital projects. The county will not issue new debt in FY23 which is consistent with our every other year cycle. PAYGO will fund a significant number of essential projects, including $11.6 million for various projects at county facilities. Examples are utility and RV lot improvements at the Cabarrus Arena and Event Center, paving and overflow parking lot at the Concord Senior Center, Concord, let's see, and tennis court renovations at Franklis Park. $4.2 million for Cabarrus County Schools to fund their top 20 deferred maintenance projects. Projects examples include multiple fire alarm system replacements, roof replacements, and playground replacements. These projects would have a positive impact on 15 schools across their district. $2.5 million for Cabarrus County Schools to replace the roof at Irvin Elementary School and Harris Road Middle School. With these two projects, the county will have funded seven complete roof replacements in the last two years. $2.3 million for Rowan Cabarrus Community College to renovate Building 2000 for law enforcement, EMT slash paramedic, and certified nursing assistant programs. Completion of this project will, fee will free up uh, much needed space on the seventh floor of the Sheriff's Administration Building for the Sheriff's use. $2 million to program and design a new public safety training facility adjacent to Franklis Park in Concord. The facility will assist local emergency medical services, fire departments, and local law enforcement in meeting their training requirements. This project will be a partnership with Concord, Harrisburg, and Kannapolis, and the volunteer fire departments. The county's share of the construction for this project will be included in the FY24 budget. $1.5 million for Kannapolis City Schools to fund various deferred maintenance projects, including flooring replacements, security cameras, and paving repairs. Funding sources for these projects are noted in the Cabarrus County Capital Project Ordinance, scheduled for adoption by the commissioners in June of 2022, in addition to the general budget ordinance. Capital projects planned for F beyond FY23 are included in the budget document for information purposes and will require a staff recommendation and a formal adoption by the board before proceeding. While continued capital investments are necessary, it is important to set aside additional funding needed for new facilities. The additional expenses will receive funding from current resources. 
Two years ago, the county used this budget, budgeting method for the courthouse renovation expansion project. Funds were budgeted for additional staffing and operating expenses, even though the facility would not open until 2023. Since then, these funds have paid for one-time capital projects, allowing us to prevent facilities from unnecessary deterioration. With this budget, the funds shift fully to staffing and operating the new courthouse. Consistent with, consistent with this approach, the budget sets aside $3.2 million to cover a portion of the future operating expenses for the Library Senior Center at Afton Ridge and the new behavioral health, behavior health facilities in Kannapolis. These funds will become available for one-time capital projects until the facility is open. We plan to recommend reserving an additional funding for FY24 as well. This will ensure that both projects have sufficient funding ahead of opening without negative impact on the tax rate. The library and senior center at Afton Ridge will become the county's sixth library branch and third senior center location with an annual operating expense estimated to be three to $4 million range. For the behavior health facilities, we were fortunate enough to receive $30 million grant from the state for designing and building two facilities off Kannapolis Parkway. One will provide behavior health urgent care for those age six and older and a 16-bed adult facility-based crisis center. A second will provide a 16-bed facility-based crisis center for those between the ages of four and 17 years old. Facility-based crisis centers offer short-term, medically supervised service 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year as an alternative, as an alternative to hospitalization or emergency department visits. These facilities will be designed over the next year with an intended opening date in 2024. Although Cabarrus County will not directly operate the facilities, the county will have a financial role to play with rough, with rough estimates in the three to five million range annually based on the model that Guilford County experiences with their similar facilities. In closing, I would like to thank our entire workforce for their commitment to the programs and services that make Cabarrus County a special place. The last two years were difficult as we navigated a pandemic. Countless staff members contributed to the development of this budget, but I would like to mention a few specifically. <clears throat> Excuse me. Rodney Harris, Kyle Billifer, Lundy Covington, Ross Cotri, Yesenia Panita, Ellie Landrum, Wendy Hagler, Suzanne Burgess, and our department leadership team all helped develop a fiscally responsible budget, budget that responds to our community's needs. Finally, I commend the Board of Commissioners for their leadership over the past year. Your dedication to the citizens of, of our county is admirable and noticed daily by our staff and those that live, work, and play in our growing, in our growing county. We look forward to your thoughtful consideration of the recommended budget and input from our residents before the budget adoption on June 20th. Respectfully submitted, Michael K. Downs, County Manager. Now I can take well done. Right. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Okay, Commissioners, do you have any questions or comments on the budget presentation? I will, I will just mention that um, I am constantly calling various staff members at the county asking this question and that question and, and uh, re repeatedly uh, things that, that come to mind and, and every time I hear the budget message I realize that if I would just read the book <laughs> almost every answer almost every question I ask is answered uh, in that budget book so um, very, very good job on that. Did you have something, Commissioner well, Kiger? I just was going to thank uh, the county manager for that presentation. And as he included in his remarks, uh, the people that, for staff that helped put it together, I wanted to reiterate our appreciation for the depth of detail that's in this book so that we can do exactly what you just mentioned, look at, at, at a, 
all of the things that we are doing and the goals that we have set and how we're going to get there, but also looking backwards to where we came from and the progress that we've made. So uh, I see several people that are sitting here that were mentioned specifically, and thank you very much for, for all of your, your hard work. It's not an easy process. As I learned when I first got here, it starts in October, which feels like that's about a, a week from now. But uh, so October to, uh, to May, and then we adopted in June is, is a long time and a lot of effort, and it's greatly appreciated. Any other comments, commissioners? Just one question. Mike, how many um, requests for new personnel did you have after you vetted it? You ended up with 39. Total, how many? Uh, yeah, if you can remember. Do you remember curious. what that number was? It's probably twice that much. Over 80. It was over 80. Yeah, yeah I, I know we always have plenty of requests, and yeah. then you guys vet it over a period of months and uh, weed out what you think is not needed at this time. So uh, I appreciate you looking out that with a growing county requires more services, requires more people to get the job done. And uh, I don't see that letting up anytime soon. So it just takes people to get the job done. So uh, County Manager Downs, I appreciate all that you do, your diligence, your commitment, and your presentation tonight. And so we will be looking through this and uh, any questions, concerns, we'll be calling you. I will, before you keep going, you have to recognize Rodney and where's Rosh? Is Rosh in here? Yeah, in the back. Rosh has been in front of his computer screen nonstop, I think 24 hours a day. Every time I walk by, he's there. And I'm sure he is at home. So the, the, the dynamic duo right there have just been fantastic and their support staff has been just yeah, unreal this year. So they've done a fantastic job. I'd just like to echo pretty much everybody's thoughts. Uh, Mike, very good presentation. Thank you very much for that and staff wonderful job as always you guys do a heck of a job and um, to see what you guys can put into this nice little book um, so concisely and so well written and descriptive um, is a big help to us and I, I do appreciate everybody in here and those that aren't in here please go back and tell your staff uh, appreciated much appreciated okay if there are no more comments at this time I would uh, entertain a motion to schedule a public hearing on the proposed fiscal year 23 Cabarrus County budget for Monday, June 6th at 5.30 p.m. or as soon thereafter as persons may be heard. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. And we move now to reports. And first, we will receive updates from commission members who serve as liaisons to municipalities or on various boards and or committees. Commissioner Honeycutt. I do have a report from our Senior Advisory Council. Uh, Older Americans Month celebrations are continuing at the Active Living and Parks Department. Remaining Older Americans Month activities are Artworks Day at the Concord Senior Center, May 18th at 11 a.m. Jumbo Game Day, Concord Senior Center, May 24th at 1. Older Americans Month Karaoke Wrap-Up Celebration, Concord Senior Center, May 27th, 4 to 7. And please make your reservation the Friday before by calling the Active Living Parks Department at 704-920-3484. And then the Cabarrus Senior Center games will wrap up, or they wrapped up another successful year with 214 participants. The closing ceremonies were at the Concord Senior Center on May 6th. 18 participants are competing at the National Senior Games in Fort Lauderdale. And the one thing I will add, we did have that meeting today, and there are lots of classes being added in different areas there. Uh, from line dancing and, and just all kinds of things that their uh, fitness training, one-on-one uh, -on -one fitness training, class fitness training. They've added some instructors, so if you've checked and they've been filled or uh, otherwise occupied, feel free to start checking because there are adding classes to that. And I, I have one other thing to say that's not a liaison, if you want me to go ahead and say that. I, I, I hate to see that it looks like um, Deputy Chief James Bailey has left has left the building. Well, I just wanted to take a moment to recognize and congratulate him on behalf of the Board of Commissioners. Hopefully you'll take that back to him. Um, he was awarded the Robert Urey Award at Law Day 
and uh, just wanted to make sure he knows how proud we are of him and uh, congratulations. Great. Thank you. Any other reports? I just have one from Midland. Um, Youth Commission already pretty much summed up what I was going to say. Um, but for Midland, it was just a friendly reminder that May 30th, they will be doing their um, park dedication and the ceremony is at 10 o'clock. It should last about 30 minutes and it is open to the public. So we're hoping to have a good turnout or they're hoping to have a good turnout. Thank you. Okay, then I will remind folks that we do have a number of county boards or commissions with openings. Um, to, to pick out one of the larger ones, our Adult Care Home Community Advisory Committee uh, has 11 openings currently. Uh, we have a number of others that, that have various openings. Nursing Home Community Advisory Board has nine openings. Uh, and as was mentioned earlier, our Youth Commission, with it being the time of year that they switch over, have 18 openings um, and so we move now to mr chairman i want to make a quick yes, comment sir. before you move on to the next item and i, I feel like that uh, congratulations is in order for our finance department for the triple a fitch rating that we got most people don't know what that is this everyday layman people but in in uh, government that is huge because it will save this county over the years to come millions and millions of dollars by having a triple a bond rating and i'm just so proud to get that and there's not many communities can say they have a rating like that and we were managed to do that and so i was just so proud of that report that we got and uh, just kudos to the finance and everybody else that was involved because it will be a part of making a difference in Cabarrus County when it comes to budgeting, interest cost, and all those things will be a lot less. So I'm appreciative to all that they did to bring that down. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I just to add to that, that's Rodney and Wendy Hagler as well. Those were the two, and Raj had a part of that, and, and several others of, of on Rodney's staff there. So it, it is, it is Commissioner Shu. That it, it's. We've, we've been really close for a lot of years, but we could, couldn't get across. And, and those folks uh, did what we did, as well as all of our departments and everybody else that, that managed the money throughout the year, but, uh, and, and this board here, for allowing us to do some of that, but also preparing for the future. That's a lot of it. What, what can we do? What, what happens in the future if something, if catastrophic happens? Are we prepared, are we prepared for that? And, and uh, it, was, it was fun telling the story this year because uh, we, we've and got a lot of good things in the place. To add to Commissioner Shoes, it's, it's not just one triple A rating, it's two, right. correct? And if I'm not mistaken, there's only 10 counties in the state that can tout that Yeah, we're gonna get that title. We're gonna get that third one. And when we do, time. we'll pop the cork. There you go, <laughs> but, but two is pretty darn good. So uh, thank y'all for all you do. Yes, cer certainly echo uh, all those comments. To be one of only 10 counties uh, out of 100 in the state of North Carolina, to have a AAA rating with two of the major agencies, and then our, the third agency, we have a AA plus, so just yes. so close. And I'm not sure when we get that third one uh, where that will place us in the rankings in the state. Do you know how many counties in the state have all three maybe a half dozen maybe a, maybe a half dozen yes yeah. so well compliments to to all of you and we certainly appreciate that work and and that is of great benefit to the citizens as commissioner Shu mentioned there will be a significant savings i think um, the savings on the next high school that we have to build could be as much as a million dollars just on that one project uh, by having that rating. So, so certainly it is an important, uh, valuable thing to all of us. And so I think we are already in general comments by board members, but uh, if there are others, uh, the floor is open. Okay, uh, hearing none, we do have need of a closed session tonight. Uh, so at this time, 
I would entertain a motion to go into closed session as authorized by North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A3 and 5 uh, uh, regarding the acquisition of real property and pending litigation. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. We are now in closed session, and we want to thank everyone for joining us in person and on television uh, tonight.